When you're growing up, obsessing over something is considered bad, very bad. And you're taught that obsession equals bad. But later in life, you'll realize that the people that obsess over something and channel that into a relatively positive angle, energy, they're the winners. Do you think Tom Brady wasn't obsessed with football? Do you think Elon Musk isn't obsessed with well, a lot of things, really? But the point is, I found the things that I obsess over, I have a bit of a obsessive personality, the things I get into, I do the best at. Originally, first thing I obsessed over kind of was gaming. And I was like a semi-pro gamer or whatever you want to call it. And you know, I, I found success there. And it was from training day over day over day, agonizing over what I was doing, looking at the replays, working on my resource management. Then enter cryptocurrency, a rapidly developing sector. It's obsessing in crypto that leads to success. And it's really nothing short. Uh, if you're half in the game, you're going to have half the results of the person obsessing over it. Generally speaking, right? I mean, just, you know, grab some coins, sit back and relax and wait. Uh, historically, it's been a good tactic. But if you want to catch the latest airdrops, if you want to catch the new coins, if you want to catch all the new and exciting opportunities, if you want to be what they call early, right? It's not going to be buying it on Coinbase. It's way more involved than that. What's up? I'm Vosk. You're on the Vosk on YouTube channel. I'm a full-time crypto everything. Uh, we've been making crypto videos on the Vosk One channel uh, really full, basically full-time for over seven years now. I just hit our seven-year mark crazy. I'm building the Vosk One mining farm and uh, I'm actually reporting to you live from the garden shed. This garden is something Alexa, Miss Vosk, obsesses over. I'm the farmhand on this project. Uh, but the point is, to make something cool and to get some real progress, or the thing I'm the most excited about, to get some strawberries. It takes planning, it takes dedication, it takes time, it takes effort. I can't seem to do anything half speed in my life for better and worse. Uh, I just talked about this in a recent video, but I've been on a big G Fuel kick lately. It's a healthy energy drink replacement sort of thing. I'm not a G Fuel influencer, affiliate. I have no code. I don't care if you buy it. I guess I'll link it out on Amazon down below because a couple people asked. So <laughs> maybe I am a G Fuel affiliate basically indirectly now. But I bought one, I actually didn't like it. Bought another one, I was like, eh. Then I bought a third one eventually actually because um, I was I wanted to get our video editors some G Fuel. because. You know, we push hard, we grind hard. It's a lot of long days, late nights, stuff like that. And caffeine, uh, in my opinion, in business, I consider it to be a performance enhancing drug. And uh, yeah, so anyway, got them that, got myself one of the same flavor tubs and, and I've been on a big uh, kick of it recently. This is my first flavor mix. It's bad, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, still bad. I mean, it's not terrible. Could be worse. I did like 75% of one flavor, which is very sweet, and then the other one's kind of sour. I wanted to make it a bit more sour. Yeah, this is weird. But anyway, the point is, you know, it's like I get into that. I buy a bunch of them. I got all these different flavors. Uh, I made a little spreadsheet just to look, write down the flavors and get rank up eventually, just, you know, for my own fun. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm like a total freaking old guy now. Like, what, 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 what do you do? <laughs> I rank energy drinks. Oh shit, Kyle. Do you perhaps want to mine the Caspa cryptocurrency, or maybe just good old Bitcoin, or even Dash or Cadena, or the venerable Dogecoin? Then you may be interested in revolution mining. They offer the ability to buy and host miners with them. Learn more about Revolution Mining with the link out in the video description below. And thanks to Revo for making today's video possible. But to bring it back to the point, right, and I guess you could say this is a bit of a mindset motivational type video. Let me duck, make sure I don't smack my head again. If you 
half-ass everything, you're gonna have half-ass results everywhere. And while you may think that's obvious, some people really need a reminder, and I try to remind myself constantly, like, am I really pushing? Am I proud of what I did today? Can I end today and be like, you know what, I did a good job today. I'm proud of what I did today. And I've, been, I've always been really hard on myself for numerous reasons, but one of the things in competitive gaming at a very young age taught me, uh, especially because it was specifically originally a little bit on StarCraft, but it, absolutely Warcraft 3. Ah, uh, Frozen Throne, baby. And of course, a little Reign of Chaos prior. But uh, the point is, is that this taught me resource management and pushing and, and grinding and, and advancing and it's just being better. And the fact of the matter is, me and the other guy, we start with the exact same thing. And if he beats me, he outplayed me, he outmaneuvered me, he outmicroed me, he outsmarted me, he outmacroed me, right? And that's going to be things like resource management. Uh, you know, he was able to hold me off, generate more income, right? And basically investing in your in your base, in your in your military, your army. And that, the point is, anyway, he's able to you know beat me uh, due to his tactics, his strategy. Uh, that was back in an era where strategy games, in my opinion, were king. Uh, now all these kids just play Fortnite and shit, and it's just all about like reactions. There's a little bit more to it, but like, I'll take a StarCraft 2 player any day over a Fortnite gamer. F you say to me, you little shit! <laughs> but how does that gaming mindset translate into these other things? Well, when I think about my finances and investing, right, I'm like, how can I deploy my capital? How can I get my money working for me? I have X amount of time in the day. How can I use it effectively, right? And I've grinded really hard for a really long time. And so I try to scale back a little bit now, just a little bit more time to relax, a little bit more time for just to unwind. Uh, because at some point you have just pushed yourself too hard too long and you lose your edge you become less productive rest is part of the strategy you can't go at 120 percent for forever you can go for a long time longer than you may think but at some point it is actually starting to hurt you instead of you know that extra grind it is, it is not helping you so for me right i want my money and things that can go up right i want to be in bitcoin i want to be in cryptocurrency then i, I want to be trading my time for things uh like airdrop hunting right or researching and looking for new opportunities but also keeping up with my current positions maybe i'm in a, a ship that was good but now is sinking at the end of the day sometimes you do have to cut your losses at least that's how i look at for me and myself personally it ain't financial advice i have to say that but the point is it's not always as simple especially if you're in you know new cryptocurrencies new stocks right these these fringe investments are they don't always have a happy ending or it's opportunity loss at the end of the day you're only going to have so many resources sometimes i've taken a loss over here to get a position over here and then that paid that that paid big it printed right complacency is the number one killer in so many things and uh, it's why a lot of old timers don't like cryptocurrency because they're complacent now or they just simply don't need it. I hopefully have a long life ahead of me, even though with how stressed I am all the time, I probably don't. But I need to plan and invest like I'm going to have a long life, or at least that's how I look at it. Right. So I'm, I'm taking the big risks because I want the big wins. If I only realistically had another 20 years on the clock. I'd probably be doing the same shit, but you know, I understand why you, you flip your investments to be a little bit more conservative. At some point, instead of investing in the IRA, right, or the retirement account, you're supposed to be taking out of the retirement account. You're supposed to be living on it. You're supposed to be spending it. I don't plan on taking a bunch of money to the grave. My kids don't need a big inheritance. Uh, what my kids are going to have, they're going to have they're going to have life lessons. They're going to have technique. They're going to have skill. They're going to have a mindset. Uh, I, I'm going to just hold their face to the fire. I'm going to keep that pressure on them. And we're going to turn them into diamonds. Or at least, I'll, God dang it, I'll try. But I'm not going to bust my ass my whole life and be stressed out and then die and leave them a pile of money so they can just be some sorry sack of spoiled shit. F*** no. And the real reason I want money isn't for a bunch of material things. Obviously, there are some material things I do want. Uh, but... I want freedom. Uh, freedom is is a, is a multitude of things. And as I've made some financial progress, I realize this even more now. Uh, so we look at financial freedom. It's the ability to pay any bills and not worry about it, to buy the things I want, to you know go out and say, you know what? I'm not gonna get the cheeseburger today. I'm gonna get the steak. It's uh, enhancing my life with little luxuries 
and things that I simply could not afford before or I never would buy before because I, I wanted to be frugal. I wanted to have more money. I needed more capital, right? I needed more resources to deploy across the field into real estate, into stocks, into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, among other things. I tend to always get into hobbies that are obsessive based uh, or, you know, whatever, you know, like gaming collectibles, uh, even even the little G Fuel tubs. So, you know, there's a collector uh, group behind uh, those and some of the limited edition releases. Uh, but even more so, right, you know, I used to be a big sneakerhead. Now I'm a small sneakerhead, I consider it, right? So getting these limited edition drops, almost all of my sneakers have gone up in value, at least like the cool limited ones or whatever. And, you know, there's pros and cons. Right? If I don't sell these things, I don't realize the gains and Underestimate how toasty it is out here today. Camera overheated. Cheers. That's right, drink it the better it is. And uh, I'm not wasting anything. I don't waste things. Let's step over here into the shade. So yeah, I mean, if, if I don't sell the shoes or whatever else, I, I can't realize the gains, you know, for, for whatever that that is and that's worth. I understand that and get that. Uh, but it's, trust me, it's better to have unrealized gains, uh, except maybe for with this new uh, proposal a good old Joe Biden put in to tax unrealized gains to set so many investors up to be in a absolute losing get fucked scenario. What if you tax me on unrealized gains and then that investment plummets, right? And now, now I'm fucked. I was taxed on unrealized gains and then I never even got the gains and then they're not going to give you the tax money back or anything. Like it's over. Pass go. Don't get 200 bucks. Straight to jail, homie. Bankruptcy. But yeah, you know, I obsess over resource management so much, I, I never want to, you know, not eat any food I get. One, because that's how I was raised. Two, it's wasteful. Three, I come from humble beginnings, and uh, it's just, it just seems cruel to waste good food. You know what else is cruel? Inflation, right? Because inflation basically steals our vitality because we trade out our life, our vitality, for all this time we're working, and then the government inflates it with their dirty fiat currency. You have no idea how much they're printing, but let me tell you, it's a lot. And then they tax you on a ton of your hard-earned income, and then they make you feel bad about using a plastic straw, yet Taylor Swift is going to produce more uh, pollution to this world flying around in probably the last six months than you will in your life combined. But don't forget, you're the bad guy, and you better submit to our agenda, you little sheep, because uh, we don't like what you're doing, and we got to put you under our thumb. We need to control you, son. Oh, man, the more you learn, the more painful it all gets. And that's all the more reason why I obsess more and more and more over resource management, because I need financial freedom. I'm like SpongeBob when he's thirsty at Sandy's house. I need it, okay? And you realize it's not just financial freedom that you need to obsess over because you can work all day, work all night for years over years and years and years, and maybe you will get a level of financial freedom. Good job. But now you need some time to spend your money, to enjoy your money, to to be happy, to, to, to relax. I mean, what is life? What, what is living? What, what are you here for? What, what do you want? Maybe it is as simple for you as you just want a boat and a bunch of broads around you and you want to be, you know, driving around in Florida and they're shaking their butts and you think you made it. Congratulations. But that's not what I'm looking for. Right. I, I, I want a happy family, a healthy family. I want to spend time with my beautiful dog tails. I want to spend time with my family. Obviously, Alexa's beautiful as well. Uh, I want to spend time with uh, friends and, and not just my media family, but, you know, beyond that. I want to spend time connecting with the subscribers, the community. I, I want to start doing some events where we just kind of hang out and, uh, you know, d develop real, real relationships because some of my best friends uh, and, and times and chats have come out of crypto. Like a couple people uh, joined the Voxcoin Discord server very early back in, uh, I think it was 2017 or maybe the beginning of 2018. Uh, you know, like, like particularly Greer so. Uh, Greer, freaking incredible guy, awesome guy. Uh, you know, we had a lot of chats over the years. He helped me with a lot of projects. And, uh, you know, th those are things that I'm so thankful for in, th in that experience. But what that is, that, that was me being obsessed with crypto, him being obsessed with crypto, and then we connected over that. And then we became friends beyond that along the way. I've been so stressed and kind of a recluse, I feel bad. I don't even talk to a lot of my friends and family lately because I'm pushing so hard, I'm grinding so hard, I'm stressed. Uh, I operated, you know, and I'm still stuck um, with the fallout of it. I don't have any flex in my schedule. 
And they say that is a losing game when you start to research that stuff because if you assume everything's going to go according to plan, uh, you will be sorely mistaken. You will be humbled. And, and that's how it's been for me. You know, I had XYZ project. I get this. I'll get this done by this time, definitely. And then I'll get this done by that time, definitely. Right. But then this went wrong. That went way late. This was delayed. And before you know it, I am finishing my winter projects in the f summer. Right? What happened? Where has the time gone? Where, where, where is the time gone? There's just a hundred things I always want to do, and crypto moves at an absolutely rapid pace. And it just starts to make you think that you're always late, you're always behind. Yesterday's better than tomorrow, but I can't even get through today. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's stressful. It's a lot of pressure, and I try to remind myself, I'm grinding, I'm pushing, I'm working hard every day, but I'm still trying to take a few hours to, to do things for myself, uh, to do things for my friends and family, uh, to be there, to be present. And that means more than just having your body there. It's actually being engaged. It's actually, you know, not being stuck on your phone answering messages and emails. This era is so is so scary. It's so easy to to become obsessed, and not even a way that you're channeling things well, because you have this phone, right? And and it's going off 24/7 crypto is a global sector it never sleeps i get telegram messages discord dms emails all day every day right texts are going off you get notifications for things shipping you get an email every five minutes from every website you're ever even you know oh, took a little peek at bam gotcha now that now they're sending you you unsubscribe but they're, they're still in the inbox you get spam mail in your actual physical mailbox every day your friends are texting you where the hell you been man and you're just like, God, oh. I, I leave my phone on do not disturb. It's my phone has been on do not disturb for years because I can't, I couldn't function anymore. It was overwhelming. It, it's like, it's huge stimulation. I read this article about how, how like stress is killing us all and the stress that, you know, humans, we get from like, oh shit, there's a predator, right? That's the e like, like we get an email and it's either stressful or it's important or it's bad news or whatever else you know it's you know a bit like say like a big thing related to your business or work or whatever right you get uh, you get that you get that feel uh, you get that feeling in your chest and your head you get that stress spike and it kind of wraps around the side of your head uh, you start to get a headache get a migraine because you, you're getting this shot of stress right and your body's reacting and it's saying whoa there's a threat. But it's because we live this never disconnected lifestyle. We never turn off. We never relax. And we perceive so many things in our mind as basically bad and threats and stress. And we got to fix this. We got to go. This is important. And it's killing us. It's killing, I, or at least me. I don't know if I speak for you too much. It, it is killing me. I, I am dying. I don't even want to do one of those like age testing things. Like They'd be like, dude, you are 20 years older than you're supposed to be. i like, motherfucker, I feel like it. I actually thought you were going to say 30. I don't feel well. So where's the balance? Where's the line? One thing I've noticed is you can just start to sacrifice everything for your goal, right? You sacrifice you know, the hanging out with friends, family. You sacrifice going to the gym, your personal health. You sacrifice you know, your hobbies. If I sacrifice all these things. And at some point, you got to draw the line. Like you know, for me, I work at a minimum Monday to Friday, 7 to 4 on crypto and boss coin always always oftentimes i'm working into the evenings oftentimes i'm working the weekends on it too but i kind of view that as the minimum and, and it's kind of the goal i'd like to get things slowed down to a bit and under control where i'm not behind on things i don't have overdue things or at least feel that way or whatever and you know and, and just feel productive like yeah like i, I got so much done I, like I did, I did enough. I did more than enough in this time frame. But I, I, I live in the sector. I work in the sector for better and worse, right? And let's say you want to pursue Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, or whatever else beyond your day job, right? Well, it depends on your life and your schedule, right? But maybe you get off work at three, four, five. You hit the gym for an hour before or after work, right? You eat, you spend a little time with your family, and then you carve out one hour, two hours, three hours. But like. I find that I don't succeed unless I carve out my schedule. I'm like, like this is what I'm doing at this time. And sometimes you're just totally not in the mood and it's not productive. And maybe it does get scrapped then. But if you're gonna scrap what you're, you know, you're focused on, your goal there, make sure you scrap it for, you know, something that's worthwhile. Like not to eat junk food and watch a crappy Netflix show. I don't know. Maybe you know, do something fun, something more fulfilling, something, you know, whatever that is to you, because. 
you know, I've gone through some crappy periods in my life. I'm sure that I don't like titles and labels and whatever, but I'm sure that, you know, by some standards, I could have been considered depressed and whatever else. And I practiced a lot of escapism, right? Really immersing myself in, in gaming, right? So like I would work and I would come home and I'd go straight into gaming with my amigos. And honestly, we were all probably depressed back then. And, uh, you know, we're just in there hours and hours. And then, uh, you know, I make a quick dinner and I eat that while I game. And then I go to sleep and then I drag myself to the gym and work. And I come home and I do it again and again and again. And, I, and, I, and you just start existing. You're not living. Some things are not healthy. The biggest thing that I learned along the way, too, is a lot of friends, you know, misery love, loves company and you kind of rise to the people you're around. So, like, if all your friends are depressed, you're probably going to be kind of depressed, too. And it doesn't mean to abandon your boys. But there, there's some kind of line here to draw or at least not participating in the unhealthy thing. Well, whatever, whatever that is, whether it's too much gaming or, you know, whatever else, uh, gambling or whatever else, bad things going on, right? Uh, and it's like, how could we kind of hang out and channel this into something else? Maybe instead of doing that, we should have picked up like a rec soccer league or something. Just, you know, something to get out there and do something else, mix it up. And I don't know, maybe get into hiking or, you know, it's, I, I don't know, something different other than the same thing over and over because, you know, for example, I put over 3,000 hours in Dota 2, that video game. And, and, and it was fun, a lot of good times, a lot of good memories. But like, I also pissed away 3,000 hours. What if I put that into a side hustle? What if I put that into, you know, all these other things? What if I put that into learning skills? I could just be so much better. I don't regret it, really. But I do wish that I spent that time differently. Or like less, like, I mean, I could have put in a thousand hours, which is a lot. And then had 2000 hours to work on myself, obsess over yourself. How, how can I get better? What can I learn today? Because there's always more to do. There's always things to learn. There's so much at your fingertips in this digital era. Don't sit there and doom scroll on TikTok, watching stupid, funny videos. You know, when, when you're on your deathbed, you're not going to look back and be like, uh, remember those funny videos I used to watch on TikTok? No, like, you're going to remember, like, those those key moments, those key memories, the things you did, the people, the things you did them with. Uh, it, it, you're not going to be like, man, I'm glad I'm dying with the coolest car in the world. Or maybe you will and you're kind of hollow. You're probably going to be thinking about different things. So for me, I'm obsessing over myself to increase my mindset my strategy my intellect i'm trying to get back to a healthier state i'm hitting the gym on a regular basis again it's not great you know a lot of my workouts aren't impressive my body's not feeling too awesome i'm working through it but but the biggest thing i'm in there you got to get in there you got to just move your body sometimes your workout is gonna suck or whatever it is at least you did it be proud of that having a crappy workout is better than no workout and if you're in there having a workout, maybe you have some good workouts and that's even better. You know, as far as learning, I mean, I'm just, once you close your mind, it's over. It's over. You're done. Closing your mind means that people will beat you in your job, right? Your competitors, if you're into business, right? You're gonna, they're, they're gonna beat you in business. If you're investing, they're gonna outmaneuver you. They're gonna outtrade you. Uh, there's always more to do. There's always more to learn. And the second you stop learning, you stop growing. And that's it. You peaked. Until you open your mind again, you peaked. That, that is who you are. That is your level. I hit the track. I built the Bitcoin Super to be a competitive track car and grow Bitcoin in my own fun, organic way. And you know, try to be like a conversation starter. And, and also to receive sponsorships on that vehicle related to the screen time and exposure and stuff like that. It's a fun money-making endeavor is how I basically look at it. But I bring it up because going to the track is so difficult, it is so competitive. You drive on the street, you think you're the man, you, you go to the track and you'll be DFL, bro, dead fucking last. And uh, it's, it's a unique skill set, learning the racing line, learning the uh, how to shift the momentum, learning to drive within your limits and the car's limits. You think you're going to get good and you get, you know, a little bit better each time you go. And then you start looking at the other people and you realize, holy shit, there is a mountain above me in skill. And I've been doing it for years now, years. I'm even, I'm an instructor. I compete in time trials and time attack. And I'm still getting beat. I still have things to learn, much to learn. I still have things to refine on the car. And it just reminds me, it's so humbling that like, 
you know, there is always more to do. There is always more to learn. There are always, there's always time left on the table. And you gotta get seat time. You gotta do research. You gotta review your data. So I keep grinding. I keep pushing. And uh, I, I try to just, you know, keep that mindset and do with everything in life. We put out a video a day on the Vosco on YouTube channel. That's crazy. That's difficult. It is challenging. It is daunting. It is draining. But I, I view it to be the best route. I view it to be the challenge. I view it to, you know, this is the path to the goal, the 1 million subscribers and, and beyond. And it's not about just making content. It's about making good content. And that's where the big pressure comes in. Uh, so if the video is not good, sometimes we scrap content. We scrap videos or we completely redo it or whatever. Uh, so it, it's a lot. So I'm going to keep pushing forward uh, with the Voscoin YouTube channel. I'm going to keep hitting the track. I'm going to keep working on my mindset, my health. I'm going to keep working on my skills. And of course, I'm going to keep building the Voscoin mining farm, which has been a crazy, challenging, rewarding, never forget it, never forgettable, memorable endeavor. I hope this video was memorable for you. If you like it, send it to somebody you think needs a kick in the ass for a little bit of uh you know mindset talk motivation whatever and uh let's check out 10 seconds of tales uh we, we just found a uh toad and a turtle this week so that was fun uh she, she loves just looking at this stuff and she wants to just she, she's got that prey drive she just wants to catch them all uh so we were 10 seconds of tales on every video hope you subscribe and if you like the video uh do me a solid and share with somebody you think would uh you know either enjoy or benefit from the content see you on the next one